Today, we are going to test drive the Model T. Today, we're going to test drive the Tesla Model X. And this is coming from a Tesla Model Y owner who has never driven the Tesla Model X before. So this is going to be a first-hand reaction from me to you. So let's get right to it. So my wife and I have owned the Tesla Model Y Performance for almost a year now. We've done a lot of road trips. Uh, we don't have kids, we don't have a dog. So uh, this car is the perfect size for us. Now uh, we are humans, so we are always going to want more. The Model X is more expensive, but it also has a few quirks and features that really tempts me to consider a Model X. So we have had the Tesla Model Y for almost two years and we've done road trips to Miami from New York to Canada. We have, we've driven probably 50 to 20,000 miles solely on road trips. So we have a decent understanding of the Tesla Model Y. So when we get into the Tesla Model X, I am sure we will be able to give you an honest opinion whether this is seriously an upgrade or not. We scheduled a test drive online and I was happy that there was one available. Last year it was difficult to even sit in one much less drive it due to the short supply. And now it's inventory galore at your Tesla center. Let's get right to the yoke since this is my first time trying one on a car. I enjoy the feeling of controlling the car with the yoke, but when maneuvering out of the tight spaces back at the Tesla's parking lot, I felt a bit awkward. My grip slipped off the wheel a couple of times. Must I say how finally it's so good to see a full cluster display in front of the wheel. Everything that you have to train yourself to see on the Model Y's infotainment screen is right there in front of you. Speaking of entertainment displays, this one on the Model X is huge at 17 inches compared to the 15 on the Model Y. You're definitely going to notice the difference. I love the tilt feature of the screen which feels very driver focused. When you get into the Model X for the first time, you are going to notice the huge front windshield. It's the best view any driver or front passenger could have in a car, period. You literally feel like a pilot in the cockpit, especially with that yoke. If you are wondering where the front sun visor is, it's tucked away to the left if you don't need it. So you can enjoy an uninterrupted view through what I call a mesmerizing front windshield. It even makes the rear mirror look so small when it actually isn't. The visibility in the rear windshield is much better than the Model Y, I have to say. Um, yeah, in terms of the ride quality, right now I'm actually on the freeway and the roads are good, so I really can't notice it yet. But definitely feel that the car sits a little higher uh, i do feel that there is a lot of space on either end uh, you know there, there's a lot of space on the sides uh, which is which is fantastic i like the cream seats uh, these cream seats are only exclusive to the model x and s which is the third color option that you get i'll be very honest the more i keep driving this car and when i look at in terms of the price i just feel like the y yes there's there's a lot that it, it, it you know it doesn't have that x has like automatic doors and things like that but it's still fifty thousand dollars more and justifying that cost i i probably i'm going to need to spend more time driving it to really convince myself but right now i'm not like wow you know maybe if i never sat in a tesla and this was my first tesla i would say this is the car but I drove the Model Y and that substantial difference is not too much to be honest but the suspension is really great I really love the ventilated cool seats today is a warm climate a hot climate it's nearing 70 degrees even though it's still May but the ventilated seats is a game changer I really really appreciate that love the suede look the suede finish is really great one thing with the model Y though the suspension is a little stiffer the car is a little more grounded to the road you know it's more closer to a sedan than the X is and I find that this car even though the uh, suspension is um, smoother I feel that the car wobbles 
from left to right like a truck does you know so uh, acceleration is amazing uh, it's not as good so this one's a dual range uh, model x it's not as good as the performance y that i have which is 3.5 seconds and i believe this is 3.8 seconds from 0 to 60 you're not going to find a big difference but for the size of this car this is pretty quick i think i'm getting slowly used to the yoke steering wheel um it's pretty nice to hold i have to say as of today if you want a yoke steering wheel in the model x or the s you will have to pay an extra 250 dollars for me the main reason to upgrade to the yoke would be the uninterrupted visibility of the front display cluster which is difficult if you have a round steering wheel when it comes to the controls of the wheel, I'm not very comfortable with the side indicators being touch capacitive buttons. That is because Tesla decided to remove all the physical stocks behind the wheel. I feel like I have constantly to focus on whether I'm pressing the correct indicator. Or oh, help me when I really need to use the horn in an emergency, which is also a button on the wheel. Call it a good thing or not, but there are no physical gear stocks, so you can change the gears on the screen with a simple swipe. Alternatively, the car can automatically put itself in drive or reverse based on its surroundings. And if you need even more options, there are touch capacitive buttons below the wireless charger, which for some reason is not legible in this bright light. One of the reasons I considered the Model X was because I was fascinated with the automatic doors that opened and closed and it goes for every door. When I asked my wife what is it that she loved about the Model X, she first said the Falcon Wing doors and I have to agree with her. I was even surprised to find out that the doors had a soft close feature, something I didn't expect to see in a Tesla. The space for backseat passengers is comparable to that of the Model Y. I feel like the roof line was a bit lower than the Model Y because of the thick beams used for the Falcon Wing doors. The backseat passengers do get a small glass roof on either end, which is worth a mention. The uh, $100,000 car, but what is this? Whew. A screen over here i have to say i really enjoy this it really looks nice and futuristic uh, another reason why you would go for either the x or the y but you know now the model y you can actually get aftermarket screens uh, hopefully one day in the future i'm going to make a video on that what i'm going to say is that the seats are a little more comfortable i feel that you know i don't move around too much it's a little bolstered compared to the y tell me if i'm wrong but i don't see an armrest Interesting. So at the end of the day, it all comes down to the cost, right? So if I am going to upgrade my Model Y performance to a uh, Model X, the difference out there to the long range Model X is $50,000. Is it really worth that extra upgrade? Even if money wasn't a factor, I wouldn't think so. Now, the Model Y, if you just think about it, it kind of offers everything that an SUV would. The space in the car, uh, the speed, the software experience, everything is the same. It doesn't matter which Tesla you buy, you're going to get the same Tesla experience in terms of the charging and the software experience, the software updates that can come over the air almost every, every month. If you dig a bit deeper, you'll find out that many exclusive features like the dashboard screen behind the wheel or the tilted screen or the rear passenger infotainment system can be purchased as off-the-market accessories for under $1,000. I make a lot of videos on such accessories on this channel, so make sure to stay subscribed. Even in terms of the performance of the car from 0 to 60, the Model Y performance is faster than the long-range Model X. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, oranges to apples comparison but i'm not going to spend so much money to upgrade from a model y performance right up to a plaid so yeah i know it's unfair but realistically that would be the comparison but yeah you can't really ignore the fact that there are some exclusive features with the model x that you're not going to get with the other teslas but 
I was hoping that that would be the reason why I would upgrade it. But then I started realizing that there were some features that were just over engineered and it really didn't serve the basic functionality like the yoke steering wheel in tight spaces. I just feel like my hand would just slip. The Falcon doors, I really love it. But if you are a backseat passenger, you would prefer the Model Y's rooftop. It just feels a little more airy and, and less claustrophobic because the Model X doesn't have that continuous glass. Uh, I'm not sure if it is just me, but when I sat in the back seat and then I closed the fa Falcon doors, as it was closing, I felt like I was feeling claustrophobic, forced into tight into a tight space. There are certain things that the Model Y I just felt in it better, you know, like. A simple thing like the visor you know what when this visor is over here i feel like something is in the way i i, I don't feel like this is it, this is open i feel like somebody's like keeping their hands on top of me so i'm not really comfortable with the visor when it is in front that's just just probably me now if i never owned a tesla and i sat in the tesla model x for the first time I'll be really tempted looking at all its features because I would say, yep, yeah, this is not there in the Model Y, this is not there in the Model Y, that's not there in the Model Y. And I would be like, I want the best Tesla that is there. So let me just go for that one. And because I own the Tesla Model Y, I really understand the value that the Model Y really offers. And if it wasn't for the suspension of the Model Y, I would say it's the most desirable Tesla to buy hands down. Tesla knows about it, that the suspension is the only reason why many go for the Model S or the Model X and the sales for those models might really be in jeopardy if Model Y really upgrades its suspension. If I were to recommend, I would recommend if you are a Model Y owner to stick with the Model Y owner for some time because you never know, there might be an opportunity to upgrade to a better Model Y. I am hearing that the 2023 versions have a better suspension, but I'm also hearing that the Model 3 is going to be, a newer model of the Model 3 is going to be released. And it might be worth considering to upgrade to a better Model Y in a couple of years as opposed to spending $50,000 on a Model X. But that's just my opinion. I'd like to know what you think about it. Would you upgrade to a Model X right now? Would you stay with your Model Y? Or if you don't have a Tesla, would you consider a Model Y or a Model X? Let me know in the comments below. Until then, take care. I'll catch you in my next video. Peace out.